fact, Wayne, now that we've got ja this Jackson Hole speech oh, yeah. over and done with, it seems that we have to enter September, which is the month we've all been waiting for, all these key events yeah. that are going to influence the market. No, look, I mean, our market will still be, by and large, will be driven by what happens overseas. And then the most important one, as you mentioned earlier on, was in fact China. But I mean, our market, you know, at 35, 36,000, this is not a cheap market. I mean, it's a 14 PE ratio, which is not, you know, it's not, you know, massively overvalued, but you've got to be a little bit cautious. But within the market, there is this chasm in valuations between the industrial shares, specifically, let's say, SAB, ShopRite, et cetera, and then the big mining shares, Anglos and Billiton. They, I mean, I've never in the years I've been in investment seen such a valuation difference between the two. So either the market's right and China is going to disappoint and somehow consumers are going to carry on drinking beer and shopping at, 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 at checkers and this is going to continue or the market's just wrong and we're going to see a strong rally or a strong price difference between the resource shares and the industrial shares. I mean, you know, we talked about this earlier, Chinese, yes. Chinese PMI data coming out over the weekend. There are expectations that it's going to fall. There are expectations that they have more space to stimulate their they economy. Have got more space, yes. uh, but the question is, you know, how much further are resources shares going to go? Um, where is the bottom? Well, and look, wh what do you do when in the theory, space? In theory, resource shares don't go below a 7 PE. After every crash we've had, they've gone to a 7 PE on depressed earnings. So in theory, they haven't got much more to fall because they've already fallen. So I don't, I personally don't think they can fall much, but I thought so six months ago and they just carried on falling. But at least you know valuation is on your side with these shares. But you know, maybe everyone should just sit back and wait for the turn in the shares. Wait for wait for the signals news. of wait positive for news it. from China. And let is someone that what else say? take the first 10% or 15% in the share price gain. Because quite frankly, it doesn't really, even though the shares of value, I'm not sure it even pays you to buy them now because you might be wrong for another six months or a year, yeah. but they clearly are value. Let's talk about the construction space because yes. Marion Robert seems to be on the uptrend. It seems there's a little bit well, more positive outlook. 21 rand, 81 Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, quite perhaps. frankly. You know, so um, end of last year, beginning of this year, they were at more or less the same levels and we saw a bit of a rally. But then with no one delivering and everyone giving these very poor outlook statements, they've all fallen back again. But quite frankly, I'm not too sure how much further these shares can fall. And, and you know, if you've got any faith that the government's going to deliver on even half of the announced projects, the resource, the, the, the construction shares will actually do very well under that scenario. But you're not buying right now. Oh, it's so difficult. No, not buying. It's tough to, tough to call this market. Uh, Nuspass also today, uh, one of the stocks which is on the top gainers list, up by 1.3%, uh, closing at 484 Rand. In fact, one of our producers was at uh, Nuspass's AGM. We're crossing to Cape Town now to take a look at uh, key uh, takeouts from that. Svetlana standing by, Svetlana Donovan standing by from our Cape Town studio. Svetlana, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, firstly, let's just take a look at uh, the, the points that were made around flattening off in earnings. Uh, what was the response from from Tom Fossler around that. Hi Sam, basically what uh, they uh, had to say about the flattening of the earnings is that in the second half of the financial year, the company is going to be financing organic growth into the terrestrial and digital television space in Africa from its income sheet. Uh, and that is going to lead to a flattening in the earnings, but uh, Tan Fosler, the chairman who I spoke to earlier, said it would by no means mean that uh, the earnings would taper off or decline. So, so what is the outlook now for the company? Were they able to give you some insight into uh, what NASPAS is going to look like five years down the line? Do they have any signals for the market in terms of uh, earnings potential? Look, earnings potential to forecast five years down the line in the market that we are sitting in is something you know, something quite difficult to do. Uh, but a lot of the shareholders at the AGM were asking, what is this company going to look like five years down the line? And um, what they were saying is they are still going to remain very much focused in the Chinese, the Russian, South American, East European uh, internet space, which has served them quite well up until now. Uh, obviously, the internet is a very quickly changing business. It's difficult to 
uh, forecast trends. So I think all shareholders are looking at the company at the moment and hoping that NASPERS is going to have as much luck investing in internet businesses in developing markets as yep. they have had up until now. And, and very quickly, Svetlana, uh, any, any comments on succession planning uh, for life after Kurs Becker? Yeah. Uh, yeah, look, Kurs Becker was um, initially planned to uh, resign or to finish his term in uh, the end of the financial year 2013, which is the financial year that is currently ongoing. Uh, the company suffered a setback and it was a personal setback as well with the death of Anthony Rue, who was uh, the founder of the M-Web business. Uh, he was with the company for many years. At the end, he was actually heading up their internet operations. And he was one of the people that was very much uh, hoped to take over the business. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away this past year. And uh, Chris Becker has decided to stay on for one extra year. Uh, Tan Fosler did tell me that they do have people uh, that are able to fill the position, but they're just not ready to do so by yeah. May next year. Svetlana, thank you so much for that update. Svetlana Donova joining us there from our Cape Town studios and of course some bad weather that they're facing while we've got sunny weather mm. in the Joburg as we approach a spring. So Wayne, a closing comments from you as we end out August, we're approaching September. Um, has anything changed in the markets in terms of no. how you're approaching it? In fact, not much has changed this whole year, quite frankly. Our market's actually gone up this year, so you got a decent return out of equity. But the same bad news still exists and the same uncertainty uncertainties still exist and the RAND more or less has not done much so quite frankly not much has changed this year but maybe the Chinese data will be decisive and quite frankly I, I, I just wish it was decisive either way either good or bad because at least then the uncertainty is taken out of the system and then you decide what you're going to do but We'll see what happens. It's going to be interesting. Well, have a good weekend. Enjoy the good weather here in Johannesburg. Wayne McCurry from Momentum Asset Management.